So welcome back. Always a pleasure to have you around. So the question is today, what if I need more help from God? You know, there are those times we just might need a little bit more help from God. And I like this bird picture. I just like birds. And I like to think of them as maybe an old married couple, you know, and they, you know, getting a little stale in their relationship with themselves and God. So they're asking, God, can you give us more help? How can we get excited about our relationship and get excited about you, God? Or maybe it's a young <laughs> couple. I can't tell with birds. So this idea, do we need more help from God? You know, what about this situation? My boyfriend asked me to marry him or my girlfriend is asking for a commitment. Should I change my job? Should I go into the ministry? Should I leave an abusive relationship? You know, sometimes you just need that little bit more help. God, this is a life-changing decision. How do I make that? What should I do? Well, I certainly went through this. I mean, I got married. I had children. I decided to support my wife's mother. My wife and I started two business, businesses together. Not YouTube, though. <laughs> Not YouTube. So we started two businesses. All of these were life-changing decisions. How do we ask God for help? Is he offended by this? This exciting psalm, Psalm 37, this has a lot of these answers in it. I really liked this psalm. So let's learn together. Let's learn how to ask God for more help together. So if I'm looking for help in times of trouble, I was thinking, what's one good passage I could go to? So I landed on Psalm 37. So what does Psalm 37 say about getting help in times of trouble? Psalm 37, verse 1. Don't fret because of evildoers. Neither be envious against those who work unrighteousness. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in Yahweh and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Also delight yourself in Yahweh, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to Yahweh. Trust also in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine out like light, and your justice as the noonday sun. Rest in Yahweh and wait patiently for him. Don't fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who makes wicked plots happen. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Don't fret. It leads only to evil doing. For evil doers shall be cut off. But those who wait for Yahweh shall inherit the land. For yet a little while, and the wicked will be no more. Yes, though you look for his place, he isn't there. But the humble shall inherit the land, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plots against the just, and gnashes at him with his teeth. The Lord will laugh at him, for he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy, to kill those who are upright on the path. Their sword shall enter into their own heart. Their bows shall be broken. Better is a little that the righteous has than the abundance of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but Yahweh 
upholds the righteous. Yahweh knows the days of the perfect. Their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be disappointed in the time of evil. In the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish. The enemies of Yahweh shall be like the beauty of the fields. They will vanish, vanish like smoke. The wicked borrow and don't pay back, but the righteous give generously. For such as are blessed by him shall inherit the land. Those who are cursed by him shall be cut off. A man's steps are established by Yahweh. He delights in his way. Though he stumble, he shall not fall, for Yahweh holds him up with his hand. I have been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his children begging for bread. All day he deals graciously and lends. His offspring is blessed. Depart from evil and do good. Live securely forever. For Yahweh loves justice and doesn't forsake his saints. They are preserved forever. But the children of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and live in it forever. The mouth of the righteous talks of wisdom. His tongue speaks justice. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watch the righteous and seek to kill him. Yahweh will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait for Yahweh and keep his way, and he will exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. I have seen the wicked in great power, spreading himself like a green tree in its native soil. But he passed away, and behold, he was not. Yes, I saw him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man and see the upright, for there is a future for the man of peace. As for transgressors, they shall be destroyed together. The future of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is from Yahweh. He is their stronghold in the time of trouble. Yahweh helps them and rescues them. He rescues them from the wicked and saves them because they have taken refuge in him. So what did we learn? Well, the question was, what if I need more help from God? And you know, this idea of using Psalm 37. Well, quite frankly, it didn't really answer our questions. <laughs> So it's a good chance to say how I choose verses and what I do on this channel. I don't set the verses up to give a predetermined answer. I'm not looking for an answer. I really, truly want to know what does the Bible actually say? And that's all I really care about. What does it actually say? And so sometimes I'll start off on a journey and it really won't answer the question I started off asking. You know, I, I get these uh, lists of verses from different sources, sometimes from books. Uh, you know, there's a number of ways I get these. Some just from my own personal study. You know, I, I've seen different passages or verses. So sometimes I'll just read individual verses, and sometimes I'll read whole passages. So we asked broad questions like, you know, if someone wants to get married or change their job or go into ministry. And this passage didn't deal with those at all. It dealt with more like the wicked are not going to get away with it. So if you're downtrodden because of wicked people, you know, they 
will not triumph at the end, which helps a little bit, because how do you get more help from God? You stay away from wicked people and wickedness. That's the way to get God's attention. So it helped a little bit, but I'm going to be doing more videos in the future, one specifically on marriage and you know, other ones maybe on the working world. Uh, there's one I will do about business ethics and things like that. <laughs> so this didn't really answer a question, but I love these verses. The idea that the wicked will not prosper. In the end, the wicked will come to nothing. So it really is worth putting your trust in God. So here's our modern expression for the day. And I used the same little bird picture as I did in the last episode. I just really like this cute little bird. So the modern expression is, a little birdie told me. And this is to playfully avoid telling where you got your information. So this could be between husband and wife or two friends or even in a business meeting sometimes. <laughs> Not going to tell you how I know that. This comes from Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 20. Don't curse the king. No, not in your thoughts. And don't curse the rich in your bedroom. For a bird of the sky may carry your voice, and that which has wings may tell the matter. <laughs> so a little birdie told me, I'm not going to tell you how I know what I know. A little bird told me.